everybody, today I'm going to talk about Krebs cycle and uh, Krebs cycle is a cycle which comes uh, after glycolysis uh, here it started with glycolysis if you remember uh, we told, we said, I said that uh, glycolysis uh, has three parts part one, part two, part three and part one where there is production, uh, consuming of two ATPs and part three there is production of two ATPs but because we have two pyruvate here at the end so we will multiply those two ATPs to be four ATPs because uh, each pyruvate molecule will give two ATPs so here uh, we will start by uh, using glucose after that it will give us two pyruvates okay so then we will start our Krebs cycle and here uh, this book could be my reference uh, biology today. I um, I will uh, just give you a brief um, summary of what I read. Okay, so here is uh, the Krebs cycle. As you see here, I will start from pyruvate. Here, uh, the glucose molecule will give you two pyruvate. So every Krebs cycle will be uh, specific for one pyruvate. Okay, so the energy which will will be produced, we will multiply it by two. Uh, so here pyruvate uh, will be converted to acetyl-CoA and then the acetyl-CoA uh, will be converted to uh, uh, citric acid, okay, uh, six carbon, uh, by binding here with the four carbon oxaloacetate here, okay, and then it will continue the cycle. You will see here there is a production of here, they consume one net and they release NADH H and NADH H is he, here is responsible for the production of ATP in the electron transport chain so each NADH H will be uh, responsible to give three ATP ATPs okay and here is another production of NADH H and here GDP is converted to GTP but after that uh, another ATP is coming and it converts it it, uh, it converts it again to ATP so uh, now we got one ATP from each uh, cycle. After that here we will recognize we will have FAD which will conver be converted to FAD H and uh, each FAD is responsible to uh, give two ATP ATPs and here we will have NAD H released. So here we have three NAD H here through this process and here there is also one net edge I will uh, talk about it later in my uh, Krebs cycle here I prepared it okay so I will talk about it uh, in details when used using this uh, presentation you will see that ATP here uh, is represented by the yellow uh, ball and uh, is, is the adenosine and uh, the three phosphorus are the pink color and then ADP is um, when we remove one phosphorus from the ATP it will be converted to ADP and here is the NAD which is in orange and NAD H when it gains the one hydrogen I suppose the hydrogen to be the blue ball okay so this is NAD and this is NAD H and FAD is um, uh, the purple uh, ball and FAD H is the purple uh, after gaining uh, one hydrogen so here it is necessary to know that the process uh, here of the Krebs cycle occurs here in the mitochondria in the matrix as you see here this is a matrix okay so it occurs here in this part okay and uh, then after that after finishing the uh, Krebs cycle we will go to the electron transport uh, chain which is uh, associated within the crestia here uh, this is in the membrane okay so I will talk about it in the next lesson uh, but uh, here it is an aerobic um, it, it is an, a, a script cycle needs oxygen to occur so it is aerobic anything that occurs within the mitochondria it, it is an aerobic um, reaction okay I will start with uh, glucose okay uh, then after finishing the glycolysis as I said before we'll obtain two pyruvate two ATPs and two net edge okay so take care about these two ATPs because uh, we will calculate the ATPs after finishing the Krebs cycle which will be uh, 38 ATPs so here uh, glucose uh, has a six molecule carbon molecules and then it will split into two to give two pyruvates okay but here 
for each Krebs cycle, as I told you before, uh, we will work with only one pyruvate, okay? So now this pyruvate, by the action of coenzyme ESH, uh, then it will, um, and the presence of NAD, NAD here will gain a hydrogen atom from the pyruvate, so it will be converted to NADH, okay? Which is important in this step because NADH produces three ATPs. So this is, we will count three ATPs from here, okay? And we have two ATPs from the glycolysis, okay? And we, uh, we will add um, as more as we pass, okay? So here, pyruvate is converted to acetyl CoA uh, by this process, okay? And here there is release of NADH. Then acetyl CoA will be bind to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate contains four carbons atom, and then they will bind together, and there is the release of CoASH. Okay, and this process happens with the presence of citrate synthesis. This is an enzyme to produce citrate. Uh, the name of the cycle, Krebs cycle, is a uh, citric acid cycle as well. So here, citrate is a, f a six carbon atom. Why? Because uh, those two comes from acetyl CoA with oxaloacetate, so now we will form citrate, six carbon atoms. After that, the six carbon atoms will be uh, here, we will remove one water molecule, and with the action of aconitase enzyme, it will convert, it will be converted to cis aconitase. Okay, so here the product is related to the name of the enzyme. Okay, and here, as you see, cis aconitase, we will add here, here, when I put the arrow like this and I color it, that means we add, but here that means we remove, okay? So here we will add water molecule uh, by the presence of aconitase to produce D-isocitrate, which is a six carbon molecule as well, okay? And here, by the action of uh, isocitrate dehydrogenase, any dehydrogenase, that means it removes hydrogen from the compound, then it will remove it and add it to this NAD, this is a NAD, then, after removing the hydrogen and adding it here, it will produce NADH. So this is the second NADH produced from the Krebs cycle. So this is another three ATP uh, produced, okay? But this is from only one pyruvatic here, okay? So here I have this, this first uh, NADH, and here is the second NADH, okay, from the Krebs cycle. After that, we will get uh, the alpha ketoglutarate. Okay, so how, how by removing one carbon, by removing this carbon dioxide, okay, uh, the isocitrate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate. So this is a five carbon molecule. After that, with the presence of CoASH, we will add CoASH, okay, and here we will have this hydrogen because here is the net, and we will add this hydrogen. It will, it will dehydrogenate the alpha ketoglutarate to, uh, by the presence of alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Then it will produce this uh, NADH, okay? This is a third NADH which is produced from the Krebs cycle. So another 3 ATP is produced here. Okay, so now after that we will get the succinyl CoE, which is four carbon atom. Why? Because here we removed uh, carbon dioxide, as you see. Okay, so now it is shortened, uh, the molecule got shortened. And here in this process, we will consume here, uh, ADP will enter, okay, but there will be release of uh, ATP, okay, through the process here by adding phosphorus. As I mentioned uh, here in the book, they uh, told that uh, GDP is converted to GTP, and after that, the GTP will give its phosphorus to the adenosine diphosphate to convert it to adenosine triphosphate. So you could suppose that it is ATP, okay? ATP at the end is released with the succinyl CoA synthase, then we will get the succinate, okay? So here, with the succinic, uh, succinic dehydrogenase, it will remove one hydrogen from this compound and add it to this uh, fed. As if you remember our key, here is the fat, so it will be fat H. Fat H will be produced here, and each fat uh, H produces uh, two ATPs, okay? So after that, it will convert it to fumarate. Fumarate, fumarate is four carbon atoms molecule. And here, here, we, here we will add one molecule of water, and with the action of fumarase, 
then uh, it will be converted to malate okay and after that malate dehydrogenase as i told you any dehydrogenase that means it removes hydrogen from the molecule okay and we add it to the nad so it will convert it to nad h as you see here and then it will uh, produce the oxaloacetate which will then continue the cycle again and again so here let's start to count our our energy from the glycolysis if you remember we have two ATPs okay so here we have two ATPs and here we have two NADH that means it will produce three ATPs okay three multiplied by two because each NADH produce produces uh, three ATPs so here we will have six and two okay and here we will have this NADH uh, we will multiply all of them here we have this one NADH two NADH three NADH okay so three nad h and four nad h so we will get four multiplied by two okay and we will um, each one will be responsible to give three three atps i will calculate it and give it to you in a sheet now okay and this is the fat which will produce two atp so atp multiplied by two as well so we will see that in a calculation now here from the glycolysis we will get here two ATPs from the two part of it okay we will get two ATPs and two NADH okay NADH will be uh, will produce uh, each NADH will produce uh, three ATPs so here we have six ATPs and here we have two ATPs here I demonstrated them here so we had from the glycolysis we got six ATPs and uh, two ATPs uh, okay and here from Krebs cycle and I told you we have four net edge which we were produced uh, so here we multiply them by two because uh, each Krebs cycle is responsible or uh, is only starting with one part of it so here from the glycolysis uh, glucose plate to give two part of it okay so here we will multiply this by two so four here we have uh, each net edge will give three ATPs so here we will have 24 ATPs and here a uh, fat edge We'll have, we get one fat edge from Krebs cycle, so we'll multiply it by two. So we'll have four ATPs produced from, from the fat. And here one ATP is produced from the Krebs and we'll multiply it by two, so we'll have two ATPs. So the summation of uh, all of them, okay, it will give you uh, 38 ATPs. So thank you very much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed uh, the lesson. Uh, and if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask me uh, in my channel uh, or th through Twitter, my Twitter account or uh, through the WordPress. Thank you very much and uh, have a good day.